Planet of Giants is the first serial of the second season in the British science fiction television series Doctor Who, which was first broadcast in three weekly parts from 31 October to 14 November 1964. In the serial, the first Doctor, William Hartnell, his granddaughter Susan Foreman, Carol Ann Ford, and teachers Ian Chesterton, William Russell, and Barbara Wright, Jacqueline Hill, are shrunk to the size of an inch after the Doctor's time machine, the TARDIS, arrives in contemporary England. The Doctor and Susan head inside a laboratory to find Ian and Barbara after the two parties get separated. Topic. Plot Despite indications of a malfunction in the TARDIS, its fault locator shows nothing is wrong and that it is safe to go outside. The Doctor, Ian, Barbara and Susan consequently explore the vicinity, finding the remains of giant earthworm and ant, which appear to have died instantaneously. The travelers realize they have returned to Earth but have shrunk to the height of an inch. Ian is investigating the interior of a discarded matchbox when someone picks it up. That someone is a government scientist called Farrow who is visiting a callous industrialist named Forrester to tell him that his application for a new insecticide called DN6 has been rejected as it is far too deadly to all forms of insect life. News of this appraisal prompts Forrester to fatally shoot Farrow. The Doctor, Barbara and Susan hear the gunshot and head for the house to find Ian unhurt near Farrow's corpse. Forrester's aide, Smithers, arrives but does not report the murder for fear of undermining the DN6 project to which he has dedicated his life. Ian and Barbara hide inside Farrow's briefcase to avoid being stepped on by Forrester and Smithers, and get separated from the Doctor and Susan after the briefcase is brought inside the house. The Doctor and Susan climb up a drain pipe to find them. Forrester alters Farrow's report to give support to the DN6 license application and, disguising his voice as Farrow's, makes a supportive phone call to the Ministry to the same effect. This is overheard by the local telephone operator, Hilda Rouse, and her policeman husband, Bert, who suspect something is wrong. Within the house, Ian and Barbara encounter a giant fly, which is killed instantly when it contacts sample seeds that had been sprayed with DN6. Barbara had foolishly handled one of these seeds and begins to feel unwell. The doctor, realizing the toxic nature of DN6 and the probable contamination of Barbara, proposes they alert someone by hoisting up the giant telephone receiver, but they cannot make themselves heard. At the telephone exchange, the engaged signal makes Hilda and Bert increasingly concerned. Bert heads off to the house to investigate. The doctor and his companions decide to attract attention by starting a fire, succeeding in maneuvering an aerosol can into the flames of the Bunsen burner gas outlet. This coincides with Smithers discovering the true virulence of DN6 and demanding Forrester cease his license application. In the lab, the makeshift bomb explodes in Forrester's face as PC Rouse arrives. Back in the TARDIS the Doctor succeeds in returning the craft and crew to normal size, a process which cures Barbara of her infection by DN6. Topic. Production An early version of this concept, by C. E. Weber and entitled The Giants, was originally meant to be the first story of the first season. Planet of Giants was recorded in the production block, but it was decided to hold it for transmission as the start of season two. This story was originally four episodes in length. Upon viewing episodes 3 and 4, which focused more heavily on Hilda and Bert, head of serials Donald Wilson ordered them spliced together in order to form a faster-paced climax episode three, focusing on the core characters of the series. Episode 4 was called, 
The Urge to Live, and directed by Douglas Camfield, instead of Mervyn Pinfield, who directed episodes 1 to 3. When episodes 3 and 4 were edited together to make the new episode 3, only Camfield was credited. The decision to splice the last two episodes into one would have ramifications for the second production block of the series, when the producers were left with a one episode space following Galaxy 4. Rather than producing a single episode standalone story or extend any of the planned serials, Mission to the Unknown was commissioned to serve as a prelude to the Daleks' master plan without the participation of any of the regular cast. This was produced in the same block as Galaxy 4, and both were held over to form the first five episodes of Season 3. <laughs> <laughs> Broadcast and reception In 2008, Radio Times reviewer Patrick Mulkern wrote that the story had ambition and impressive set design, but felt that, "...the drama itself is less than enthralling." He pegged the scientists to stereotypes and found it disappointing that they did not directly interact with the miniature TARDIS crew about their plans. Mulkern also noted that Barbara, "...came across as uncharacteristically wet." And Dudley Simpson's score was annoyingly childish. DVD Talks John Sinnott gave Planet of Giants three out of five stars, feeling that it was an average, solid installment. Sinnott noted that it was a strange story because the TARDIS crew did not directly interact with the pretty stupid criminals and they seemed more concerned about exploring than returning to their normal size. Dave Golder of SFX gave the serial two and a half out of five stars, feeling that it was undeniably slow, talky and lacking in excitement, and not quite in sync with the main show, because Barbara and Ian never note that they are in contemporary Britain, to which they are trying to return. Despite praising the TARDIS crew for using intelligence, ingenuity and simple science to get themselves out of problems." He felt they lacked their usual chemistry and also criticized Barbara's characterization. The AV Club reviewer Christopher Barn described the serial as, "...not lacking in ambitious ideas but never quite gelling together, and a last-minute re-edit that condensed the original third and fourth episodes into one hurt the story more than it helped." Barn felt that the script, "...is constantly undercutting its own dramatic potential in subtle but pervasive ways," such as when the characters tried calling the police on a telephone, and the "...plot dragger," a Barbara keeping her illness a secret. However, he praised set design and acting of Hill and Tilvin. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Original filming. Carrot episode is missing. Topic: <inaudible> 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 Commercial releases. In print A novelization of this serial, written by Terence Dix, was published by Target Books in January 1990. It was the final serial of the William Hartnell era to be novelized. <laughs> Home media This serial was released on VHS in 2002, it was the first commercially released story to receive the vidfire process. It was released on DVD in Region 2 on 20 August 2012. The 2012 DVD includes recreations of the original episodes 3 and 4, based on the original scripts and featuring newly recorded dialogue from regular cast members Ford and Russell and other actors impersonating the remaining cast. 
A variety of techniques were used to recreate the missing visual material, but most of this was done by re-editing existing footage from the finished episode 3.